G'day mate and welcome back to Tectonica with me, Judy. It's been a hell of a ride so far. First off, waking up from cryo sleep, not having any idea what we're doing, who we are, or uh, why the hell we were here, and then hearing a voice over the radio. Voice over the radio turned out to be our very first companion cube, uh, the wonderful Sparks. With the help and the guidance of Sparks, we managed to upgrade Lima Station. After Lima Station got upgraded and we got access to the bowl, we could dig into our Victor Station. Victor Station required a number of upgrades, also required a number of unlocks, and unlocked Actually, the game for us. And we've been enjoying the game. We've been enjoying the game, unlocking doors and right following quests. Here. At which point we found our second companion cube. Well, the Paladin. So the Paladin. I wouldn't say wonderful, but they're definitely the second companion cube. There is rumor, at least in the comment section, the Paladin might be the mastermind evil genius behind everything that's happened to us, but we're only going to find out by finishing off the storyline, which is what's going to be today's videos about. We need to finish at least this chapter of the storyline, and this is why I want to ask the most important question of all, and that is, can I borrow a like? I want to borrow a like, I want to borrow a like early in the video, because this will be the last video of the series. Uh, last video we managed to, well, get the second last upgrade for Victor Station. We also fully got the elevator up and running, and we were left with the need for a couple more blue balls to finish off our science, which brings us to our great room of blue balls. We have some blue balls, we have some purple balls. I've also cleared out a bunch of the ceilings so we can put in more blue balls, but frankly, we don't need any more blue balls. Uh, we are all blue balled out. I have unlocked everything in the tech tree. It's all done. So our last options are, I, I haven't found that. I know where that is. I'm not gonna go dig it up. Uh, it's not worth our time and effort. So the last thing we need to do is we need to unlock uh, Victor Station. Need to finish unlocking Victor Station and uh, take a ride up an elevator. Yeah, they're really our last two objectives, uh, which means jump on the monorail and have the game probably die. Yeah, we're, we're doing okay. We're like 20 frames, maybe one. Yeah, uh, I want to get off of right about here, please. Thank you. All right, I need to grab uh, just an explosive or two. All of them. All of them seems like the right amount. Yes, and then uh, I want to get these final upgrade. Final upgrade. Also, hopefully, hopefully, I can make that alert go away. Signal triangulated. New location added to HUD. Beware of current. Yep, no, it's still very, very, very broken. All right, uh, we're going to put a lot of mining charges in there. And we're going to spend the 20,000 megajoules. Oh, 20,000 megajoules. 20,000, oh, sorry, gigajoules, gigajoules, gigajoules worth of power. Oh, boy. I want to talk about this because it took just a minute. It took just a minute with uh, running, well, what, what uh, assemblies we had at full speed. But I needed to install a accumulator or two. Uh, just one or two. Also, uh, that was not nearly enough. I had to find another spot to put another accumulator or three. Uh, yes. We have a new floor. That is a new room. That is nothing but, well, mostly accumulators. I ran out. I had already hit the goal, so I let it go. Uh, but we have automated, we have built, we have manufactured, and we have everything running at full speed. Well, close enough to full speed. Yes, yes. Now, there are a couple of things I want to talk about, uh, but before I do that, I want to click that button. Amazing work, Breaker. You've maxed this terminal out. Between this and the freight elevator, you've done all you can here. And if you haven't even fixed the freight elevator yet, you are my kind of groundbreaker. So, so... Uh, we now need to go to the freight elevator, which means back upon our monorail. No, the other direction. Sheesh. Yep, and watch the audio uh, have a moment. Yep, again. No, it's happier going this direction. Okay, it's happier going this, this direction. All right, can I jump off right about... Oh, there it is. There. Yes, uh, we need to go up the elevator, up the elevator. Now, I did mention last episode, I wanted to look at and talk about the infused ores because the infused ores are one way to sink limestone. And I do have to say, when you get the mole, and especially when you get the mole at uh, 12 by 12 size, you pick up just a little bit of limestone. Um, Ah, oh, that was 600. 
Yeah, let's dig a little bit further into the wall. Uh, that was 1,200. Yeah. And when you start clearing out large areas for large projects, it's not uncommon to find 20 or 30,000 limestone in your inventory and a need to do something with it. So, uh, first off, we'll talk about this Alfred elevator because we have done everything else. We have... Uh, wrong button. Journal, journal. Uh, we've done monorail orientation. Well, not really, but sort of. For some reason, it hasn't... Yeah, it hasn't really turned on and off. Yeah, uh, we have not built 200 Mark II assemblers because inserters are our issue. Inserters not fast enough. We don't need faster uh, assemblers. Mining drill Mark II, uh, I have definitely not built 50 of them. I think I've built two of them. Because uh, again... Well, we could probably, probably make better use of the Mark II drills, but the problem is the Mark II drills don't consume fuel. And I sort of want to consume all the fuel I can because we have an awful lot of plant matter, just plant matter. That's the only thing I'm burning, plant matter. Technically, we're also burning bio bricks, but really we're not. I'll show you exactly how I've changed things up uh, after the freight elevator because yeah, we're, we're, we're burning mostly plant matter. And the Thresher Mark II's, build and place 50 of them. I've done 8%, whatever that works out to be. Four of them, five of them. Uh, yeah, well, it must be four, four. I've built four of them. It's good enough. Um, there are very few things that they need the Thresher Mark II speed. In fact, the, uh, the best thing I've found to use the Mark II's for is whatever's directly connected to the planters because that first process doesn't output a lot of materials and you can use a single thresher mark two to run with a certain amount of plants like 12 16 24 and then use that output and parallelize that to multiple of the mark one threshers doing the next step of the process also if you get into infused or the thresher mark twos are not bad but again we'll come back to that one and we built a monorail station yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely up and running. It's up and running, both working perfectly fine. But for whatever reason, these haven't activated. But the elevator has activated. So, uh, I think, I think, uh, with our cube in hand, our cube, 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 cube in hand, I think it's time to go up and get out of here. Who forgot to pay the power bill? I hooked up it's power. It's good to see that the self-repair routines on the elevators have kept them as intact as the production terminals. Colonel, just tell me. Do you think we're going to find anybody else? Yes. If nothing else, I believe Pacific is alive. Pacific? Flag officer restrictions could not be maintained on these elevators if their vital signs did not remain. Mm. However, mm -hmm. the emergency code I used to initialize the elevator the Phoenix Protocol was an option of last resort. It was created to function only if less than 5% of the entire expeditionary force could be detected within Kalex. 5%? Awesome! Everybody's dead. Survive. But there is no doubt now that very few of us remain. So, they're gone. They're really gone entire crew and the quarter is an even greater mystery to expect such a small remainder of our forces to uphold so much production it is as if command had some expectations that this could happen but why warning mechanical integrity failing system halt elevator breaker search the panel for a manual brake lever hold on it shouldn't be override all those Sparks. Sparks. Sparks? What? Quickly, find something to hold on to! Sparks. I can save you. <laughs> Integrity failure corrected. Alarm state deactivated. Returning to origin for analysis and self-repair. Sergeant. Okay! Is this is the message. Speaking to you. I... I don't know. I've never heard it talk like that. Or say my name. Or say anybody's name. We are alive because of it. No. No, there has to be an explanation. 
We have to take it apart. Breaker, I want you Sergeant, to... Sergeant, we must put this aside. We are not safe here. When the elevator stops, we will exit. We will find the answer to this together. You are not alone. Worst elevator ride ever. It's worse than that time when somebody farted in the elevator and we're going up 50 floors. Yeah, okay. Uh, so there's no more options to repair it. Your but report, Sergeant. For now, it seems like we won't be going anywhere. The self-repair we were so enthusiastic about looks like it'll be starting over from scratch. So long as it is making progress, I suggest we use the time to continue developing our manufacturing capacity here. It may be of benefit to us in further sectors. Agreed. Remain prepared. It will be time before you know it. So, as I was saying, worst elevator ride ever. Now, uh, it seems this is the end of, well, this chapter, this chapter, this chapter of the game, which is one of the things I really like about Tectonic. Although lots of people complain about it being a static map and it's handcrafted and everything else. At the end of the day, that doesn't matter if we finished a chapter and then our option is to go up the elevator and get a brand new map, which is what I believe the dev's intention is. Uh, also, we now have a... Oh, no, that, that'll be the, the beeping station. Yeah, that'll be the beeping station. Uh, can I go water? That's where I want to go. Uh, so I'm interested in what comes next. Very, very interested in what comes next for Tectonica. This is technically the end of the Let's Play and the end of this episode. Not really. There's one more thing I want to look at, which is the infused ores. The infused ores are, as I said, they're a limestone stone sink. And can I just get back, to, back, back to Victor Station? And I want to have a look, see, at Victor and see if it has any anything has changed apart from the signal beacon that never goes off. Okay. No, fully upgraded. Signal triangulated. Heavy interference, right? Location added to HUD. Heavy interference. Yep, not totally broken at all. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, technology. We have nothing new on the technology trip. We haven't unlocked anything. There is more stuff to come, but I think that's going to be the very next uh, station, the very next terminal that we need to find after the elevator. Power. Oh, it's still recharging from uh, doing the 20, 20 gigajoule upgrade. All right, uh, what I want to talk about? I want to talk about... I want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, Thresher's Mark II. Thresher's Mark II. I think the best use for a Thresher Mark II is, as I said here, doing the very first step. So the very first step where we're dealing with seeds and plants. As we can see, I have a whole lot of plants ready to go because the Mark II Thresher... Well, actually, it can't output. No, they're not using it fast enough. So um, my Mark II Thresher is running... Oh, they're all ready to harvest. Okay. Uh, it's running and it's outputting the Kindle Vine twigs, sticks, whatever they're called, and going into each one of my Mark I Threshers. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And these guys are all doing the next step of the process. So the lava and the hay bales. And one Mark II is very, very good at keeping up with this system. Um, and it means that, yes, rather than me having a, a one Mark I to two Mark IIs, I end up with a Mark II to six of them, which just simplifies your planter boxes. Um, as you can see, I have seeds up the middle, and then I have the output from the plants um, all the way around the outside, loops all the way back around, and also have my buffer box here. Also means if I needed uh, the Shiverthorn, the Shiverthorn to run better, I'd do the exact same. I'd upgrade you to a Mark II, and then I could put a planter. I don't think I have any planters left on me. No, but I have a box which has pretty much the same footprint. Uh, I could put these. I can't actually put them right there. Um, yeah, I'd have to have one more tile's worth of gap. But that could be done. Uh, and even then, we could just end up putting them on the right-hand side and have them output the output here and have the seeds go all the way up and all the way back. It's, it's not that hard. Obviously, sharing the seeds belt is much easier uh, than sharing the output because the seeds are going to be your limiting factor. In saying that, I have still 170 seeds in there and zero seeds in there. In theory, I need to go find more yellow seeds, but I have... Actually, we can check. Each one of those is worth 
a seed. Um, plus, all these machines have more seeds in them, technically. Yeah, I have like over 100 seeds just sitting on the belts doing nothing. Yeah, as was, does this have 170 seeds just doing nothing. So, uh, Shiva Thorn, Shiva Thorn, I'm very, very happy with. The Plant Matter. Um, plant Matter, again, one machine is now feeding four. Not because that's what the ratio is, it's just because that's the speed that the inserters can keep up with. Um, I have one, two, three outputting and then four of the plant matter. We get slightly more plant matter than we get of the compound V, but again, the, the inserters just can't keep up. Uh, I'm looking forward to Tectonica version one point, probably one point, no, probably 0.2. 0 0.2 0 should be the next content upgrade update and that one I'm, I'm looking forward to playing. So as for my plant matter, originally we were bringing it down here we're fitting into the into these belts uh, with the idea of we'd use that plant matter over the plant matter that I keep dumping in this box, which has remained very full for most of this playthrough. Uh, and then it would bypass and feed into, well, my belts that I was feeding um, the bio bricks into. But we're just not using bio bricks. In fact, I did redo the research for bio bricks, didn't I? Synthesis, synthesis. No, I still undid a whole bunch of research. There we go. We'll, we'll, we'll do those two. You know, completionists in me. Um, so, uh, bring out plant matter. And then I have devised a, um, a, a a balancer. A balancer and an importer that basically runs the plant matter as priority number one. Uh, can I speed that belt up somehow? Not really. Uh, what are you doing? You are... It's this belt I'm looking at. Uh, can I... Will you do that? That's an in? That's an in. Okay, because you have a lot of plant matter. Can I remove you? Do I have stack inserters on me? I do. Can I get... Uh, eight and eight? Because this, this demonstration works better if the belt is absolutely full. Uh, you have a lot of plant matter too. Uh, all right, all the plant matter, all the belts, all the time. Okay, back downstairs. So, boop, downstairs. So that means this belt's going to come through and it's going to be full of plant matter. And then what I'm doing is here we're splitting off and taking it down. And this means 50% of this material is merging with, well, it's a three-way split up. So it means for every one piece of plant matter coming from this one, I have one piece of plant matter coming from this one, and I, then I have one bio brick coming from this one, which means you see this, this repeating pattern. And all I did was I scaled it up an awful lot. Um, so at this point, from the top belt, the top belt is our priority in, we are splitting one plant matter into, well, three. Well, we're splitting the plant matter three different ways. Uh, two feed onto the bottom belt. So that means of the bottom belt, one in three items are from the bottom belt. Yes, because the other two come from the bottom belt. But then when we get to this one, it's now no longer one in three items. It's now one in nine items is from the bottom belt, whereas the rest come from the top belt. Then when we get to this one, it's now one in every 27 items come from the bottom belt. Then this one, it's basically one in every 100-ish, 90-something-ish come from the bottom belt. And then this one, it's one in every 300. So I'm burning pretty much exclusively plant matter. Uh, and even though I have Mark II assemblers, and we can see, well, you got some bio bricks. Uh, I still have bio bricks mixed in somewhere, uh, some places, because, again, we just don't burn them that fast. Uh, can I look, just give me... I want a really bad example. What's the worst example I can find? Here, you've been hand fed. So you have plant matter. And we can see that we're not gonna actually be able to burn the plant matter. The plant matter is gonna burn too fast, basically. Uh, so my Mark I miner is running on plant matter and it's running flat out. Now I could upgrade this to a Mark II, don't get me wrong, I could, but um, Mark II uses power rather than bio. Uh, can I remove that place? Oh. And you're gonna burn plant matter and you don't, normally keep up with the plant matter fast enough, especially if I'm using a longhand inserter. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't really care. Uh, can I pull that off? 
and that off and then same story let's pull that out and you should be fine and then you'll run out of fuel about now and then it is keeping up mostly maybe even will keep up now yeah, it depends on the, the miner and how lucky we get with the flip of the stack and setter. Because the stack and setter has now moved nine items at a time. No, we just saw it. It flashed without power, uh, without fuel. And I don't mind. I don't, I really, really don't mind because it means that we're burning more fuel. Because, um, as I said, these are just output plant matter. Like plant matter, which I have no use for. So we have a buffer, a small buffer with uh, 15,000, 500, uh, 20,000 and empty yeah uh, that's nothing but plant matter from this particular build so yeah I, I, I do hope in the future we get a a sink for plant matter even if i could turn plant matter into plant matter frames that would be nice because plant matter frames is one thing i have had a shortage of making processes it's finally backed up now now that i'm not making processes anymore but prior to that these were running pretty much flat out also i rearranged the build and now i have two belts worth of hay coming in three belts three belts worth of hay coming in yes um it sort of got supersized all right last thing i want to talk about is uh the infused the infused and actually can i copper's right here can i just have some copper please um probably not it's going to disappear instantly have some iron please of this belt of iron ore which i should be able to grab some from okay uh can i get i have one okay uh can i get one of you and one of you all right uh we want to do the iron infusion recipe okay iron infusion recipe and you can't do anything all right and we're going to keep this simple i'm going to just deal with one item on a belt. Uh, everything else we're going to pretend for right now, and I'll show you a different demonstration in, in a little bit, uh, using the Atlantium Ore, because honestly that's probably the only recipe I'd recommend uh, using this with. But what we can do is we can use this to destroy limestone. So I'm going to put in 20 limestone, which is exactly what we need to run the machine, and I'm going to put in the two iron ore. So when that runs, it uses a certain amount of coolant, and I do need to remind you that Shiverthorn coolant, uh, this one, is also a limestone sink. Um, it's a massive limestone sink. In fact, oh, that ran too quick. Okay. Uh, I have two belts of limestone coming into this build um, to keep it running, and I only have a half a dozen machines. You know, I technically have more compound v that i could be consuming the only reason we're not is it's down passing on to our alentium ore which we need as part of that process as well but yes the 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 the, the shiver thorn is something we use a fair bit of okay and for my three iron ore I, two iron ore i put in this machine i got two iron infused limestone my two iron infused limestone turned into 10 iron ore and four limestone uh, which means of the 20 limestone I put in here, I get back four of it. So I'm burning 16 each time I go through this process. I also end up with more iron ore than what I put in. Also, the sheer, the, the coolant requires another seven limestone. So the, overall, the recipe requires one compound V, 27 limestone, and two bits of iron ore for me to get back, uh, well, Eight extra light, eight extra iron ore, and what did I say, twenty-seven minus the four means twenty-three limestone. So I end up, actually end up burning twenty-three limestone with this little process. And we can, uh, no, nope, I want inputs, 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 inputs. We can do that, and then do that, 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 and that, and do limestone, limestone, limestone and limestone and run this belt like so and that means whatever comes out of this machine feeds back into the next process and then all i need to do is i just need to add a limestone source here with a bucket 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 and give me a couple of fast setters that'll do and if i throw all my limestone in there 
and then made sure that my other process, uh, U for iron ore. Uh, rotate that around. Cool. Came into here. And can I have just two inserters? And again, a bucket. I'm going to run out of buckets. Oh, you can't go there. you got to go there because the game says so. Okay. And that should be a loop at least until I run out of coolant. Uh, yeah, just shove a whole bunch of coolant in there. And what will happen is, well, uh, can I actually remove you and you so we get a little bit more limestone? There, 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 there. What should happen is you'll end up in a situation where 50% of your iron ore is going to go to the left and go back into this system to make sure this system keeps running. And because it has a loop on the end of it, that's just going to cycle around and around forever. Meanwhile, 50% is going to come over here into a box, which you could then start smelting. Which means, as long as you have limestone, you potentially have unlimited materials. And at the very minimum, we can make lava, which we can smelt into limestone, so we have unlimited limestone. And as for the plant matter material, the, the hay bales, well, we can turn them into plant matter, which we can then put into the smelter, which we can burn. So technically the resources are infinite in Tectonica already. Yeah. And with a simple process like this, you can just start duplicating ore. Now, this is the iron recipe. Uh, the iron recipe and the copper recipe are, are, are basically identical. There's, there's no difference between them. But the Atlantium infused limestone is a very different recipe, um, purely on the fact that it, it needs more ore. So we need three instead of uh, two. Also, we need a lot more limestone, but um, there's something I want to show you. So I have a, a test build, a test build I've put together in this save that we're going to go look at. And it's running on the exact same process as we just looked at over there. The only difference being that um, I have my box of limestone, which I've manually filled up and it's been running for quite some time. And I don't need this many, it turns out. I've now tested this much more thoroughly. A single input is more than enough. And you are, well, let's come around this side. You are outputting with two, I think I need three. No, two filter inserters, two filter inserters, two filter inserters. Yeah, two filter inserters. Two filter inserters is fine. Uh, are outputting my Atlantium ore, which is coming through a splitter and coming over here and feeding back into this machine to make sure this machine keeps running, which means it always has more Atlantium ore to keep running. I bought in the coolant and that's coming from a box because like I said, this is a temporary setup. And then we're just taking our limestone that we're getting out of this process and looping it back around and feeding it back in. But Atlantium ore has one extra process and that is we can't smelt it directly. It needs to go into this machine and can I just feed it? Yeah, feed it. Uh, we process it into the Atlantium powder and an awful lot of limestone. Uh, can I so can I just put one of those there and fit in one of those? So we get one and two, which means we produce, produce. That's the big thing. We produce a lot of limestone with this recipe. Uh, this has been running for quite some time. Like I hand fed in, I, I don't know, three bits, three bits of Atlantium ore to start this process off. And then I've walked away from it. I haven't touched it. And it's been running for, I don't know, half hour, an hour? How long is this episode? 29 minutes. It's been running for about 40 minutes, let's go with. And it has an awful lot of powder ready to go, which needs to run into the next set of step of the process, being this one, which consumes some of that lava, plus some of the blue stuff, to make the actual next step, the, 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 the uh, Atlantean mixture, which we then smelt into the Atlantean ingots. And I think the the power the, the 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 limestone infused recipe is really where the power of uh, what these recipes are because like I have this container that has fifteen thousand limestone in it. Uh, this one has none. That one has seventeen thousand limestone. If I spent less time smelting new Atlantium ore and more time or more machines 
running this particular recipe, recycling things, then I'd end up in a limestone negative situation or a limestone equalized situation. And yes, this is where the recipes get interesting and also very, very powerful. And I, I, I don't wanna just show you a little demonstration. I'd like to take you to a different say. Uh, I've been streaming this. I've been streaming uh, Tectonica for the last couple of weeks now over on my Twitch channel. And I will link, the, obviously, my Twitch channel right here. Uh, at the same time, I will mention that, you know, they are, if you're interested in seeing the VOD, seeing how we built a mega factory, because that's what we're about to go look at, there is the secondary channel, the VOD channel, where all these have been uploaded. And this is what we built over on the Twitch save. Now, it, it's a very different base. It's, it's multiplayer, so there's a little bit more mayhem thrown in. But... I wanted to take you to this save because we actually set up this exact process. Uh, probably be better if I had some lights because we had uh, performance issues playing multiplayer. So we banned lights. There are some explosives here, there and everywhere for lighting around the place because it turns out they are the best lights. Don't ask. Uh, but we have two of these such builds. So we have, if I turn alt mode back on, we have, well, uh, Atlantium Ore in, plus the Shiverthorn coolant, plus as much limestone as this can eat, going into the very next step of the process, which is then, well, uninfusing the limestone infused uh, ore, pushing the excess limestone back and pumping out more ore than what we put in. And as we can see, we have this little loop belt back here that, well, make sure that that stays fed. Plus we have a second one right beside it. And these are, well, you may recognize the balances from before. These are just consuming as much limestone as we can feed them. We have a belt, well, two belts worth of limestone. Uh, both of these come from process we'll just look at it in a minute. And then I have uh, well, four boxes with an awful lot of limestone thrown in them, which is just everything we've got from mining the map. And we've got more limestone, in fact. I, we should have probably automated a few more of these runs, but, um, well, we sort of ran out of things in the game to do. Uh, yes, but... This is running the limestone in, and this is, well, processing all the limestone and then giving us back our ingots and our ingots, our ore, which is then coming up here, being a priority in over what we're bringing in from the monorails. Yes, we set up monorails here as well. So this is coming in as a priority. Well, a little bit less of a priority. It's, it's all being consumed. That's the important thing. It's all being consumed, and we have to put a connector on here so we have a full belt through. And then we have uh, three normal threshes. So normal threshes doing the normal, uh, let's go to one that's actually running. Uh, Atlantium or two, oh, it's not gonna tell me because it's on the screen for half a second. Uh, cool, yeah, the normal Atlantium or into Atlantium mixture, Atlantium, whatever it is, whatever it is. And uh, as you can see, this is having a problem with limestone and that is, well, due to lack of lights. Uh, Lack of lights and a little bit too much spaghetti. Yes, uh, this is outputting, well, a lot of the limestone. Our, of our limestone, we actually have three pretty much, not quite full belts, but reasonably full belts of limestone coming out. And this is actually our only limestone. Um, it's now a self-sufficient system. We're not mining limestone at all anymore. One of the limestone belts is uh, feeding into, well, we're not automatically mining limestone. We do have uh, several boxes of limestone. Yep, still that need to be filtered back into the system because this is one of the reasons, well, one of the ways we're dumping limestone. But one of the belts is coming in here and this is making our Shiverthorn extract, our Shiverthorn coolant, our coolant, yes. Yes, uh, making our coolant and as you can see, the belts are backed up and maxed out. And we have one, two, three, four, five. Five belts of limestone coming into this build to basically produce as much coolant as we possibly could need. Um, yeah, this is a little bit of a different factory. Uh, by the way, that's uh, Lima Station and that's Victor Station at the other end. We sort of built between the two of them. So this build makes all our Shiverthorn coolant, which is used for a number of projects, one of them being this particular project. And then this is just consuming the rest of any limestone we can feed into it, being the other two belts we were looking at previously, both come into here. Uh, so if we come back to this T-junction, whatever you want to call it, uh, where our belts branched off, we have, well, a future limestone belt, a, the limestone belt we just looked at, plus potentially two more. We split them to make sure that those systems run at full speed. And then the excess comes over here to be destroyed. Yeah, into Atlantium ore, because you need Atlantium ore, plus you'd need limestone to 
run this system. And this is what I, I one of the things I really want to point out about well, Tectonica and um, the uh, limestone infused, limestone infused recipes. They're very, very good at destroying limestone, but you do need a certain amount of limestone to keep certain projects running. So if you wanted to set up a iron infused limestone and a copper infused limestone, just as a single dedicated build, just as I showed earlier, with a, this is where after you've been mining, you want to dump a whole lot of limestone to have it destroyed, not a bad idea. As for the Uralantium Ural infused limestone, use your limestone out of the actual processing of the Alantium ore to run it back into to feed the system to cut down on the amount of limestone you're making in the first place because, well, when we were just uh, processing the Alantium ore, I think the boxes are still there. In fact, I'm pretty sure the boxes are still there. The boxes are definitely still there and I'm willing to bet they're still very full. Um... That's empty. That has 2,800, that has 150, that has 2,000, that has 4,000, that has 10,000. No, they're mostly empty compared to before. We had many, many more boxes and they were all stuck in here, which was nothing but limestone. Uh, plant matter is a whole separate thing. We have a number of boxes, 2,800, 2,300, 7,000, 1,000, 2,500. Yeah, we have a number of boxes full of limestone, uh, full of plant matter because we just can't burn it off fast enough. Uh, we did upgrade all the smelters here and all the miners to Mark II, which means we're using a lot more power than we once were. And... Yeah, see, this guy can't keep up because we're using plant matter as fuel. And I don't mind. I don't mind. I prefer to use plant matter as fuel and have it not run at full speed because at the end of the day, half the time, these guys can't output because um, we just produce so much. But we're burning plant matter. Plant, burning plant matter for fuel because, well, we need a way to sink it. And that's one thing that is definitely missing in the game at this point. But this is going to be the end of our little Tectonica Let's Play. Uh, we're going to call this Chapter 1. I want to see what Chapter 2 is like. I want to see what comes next. I also invite you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Because although Tectonic is finished, there is, a, a, well, there is still the existing Captain Ministry uh, series running. And in the not-too-distant future... In like in less than a week, I have a new series starting for a new game. It's not a logistics game, much like Tectonica, except rather than being underground, it's much more um, RTS style. RTS style. Uh, for those uh, who've been around for a little while and remember Total Annihilation, it looks and feels like Total Annihilation crossed with, well, Factorio. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious. I've already played the demo. Uh, it's called Desynced, if you want to look it up. But yeah, that comes out in the next week. So hit subscribe if you want to see more of that. If you want to see more of Tectonica, by all means, hit subscribe as well. I plan on coming back for the next content upgrade update because uh, this has been a fun little game to play. And I'm interested in playing more. I'm also interested in seeing how they fix change. Well, the plant matter sink, limestone obviously has a sink, but also the whole inserter slash belt speed slash machine speed combination because... In a lot of cases, we have Mark I assemblers because there's just no need for a Mark II assembler. Um, yeah, we did upgrade processes to Mark II, but then I need to feed it with stack inserters and fast inserters all the way around. Oh, and uh, plant matter, uh, plant matter. Um, um, threshing over here is an absolute nightmare. And that belt got broken at some stage. Awesome. Uh, threshing is an absolute nightmare. We have a, a Mark II running four Mark IIs, four Mark IIs. Yeah, because these could technically go a little bit faster. Yeah, and over here I have again six with an awful lot of planters uh, running an awful lot of frames. And funnily enough, we don't have any spare frames. Um, they're all being consumed. Yeah, uh, also lava goes into, well, that process. And if that process backs up, i.e. we're not using enough lava because we're not burning off limestone fast enough because of that process or this process, it's all interconnected, which also complicates things. Anyway. I'm rambling. Uh, with all that said, as always, I'm going to thank you guys so much for watching and say I do hope you've enjoyed. Do hope you've enjoyed not only this video, this episode, but this series. And I hope to see you back for the very next video. Anyway, that's it. I'm out. Thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye.